Welcome back. It's Mr. Sullivan again, and here we are today. We're going to talk about uh, percents, and percents is specifically about solving some equations, setting up proportions using percents. Um, let's take a look at this first problem. Here we are, Mr. Bruss, asleep again in his classroom. So the question says, Mr. Bruss sleeps 18 of the 24 hours on a Saturday. Ooh, he's tired. What part of the whole 100% is Mr. Bruss sleeping? So I want... I want to set up a proportion. Remember, when we have a proportion, things need to relate to each other. So on this side of the proportion, I'm going to put everything that is a percent because we want to know what percent. Um, we know a whole is 100%. Over here, I'm going to have everything that deals with hours. Now, I want a part and a whole. So let's deal with our percent first. A whole percent is 100 all right, that's very important to understand. Percent means per 100, okay? So do we know what part of the 100? Well, no, we don't know what part it is. So that would be our variable, and I'll put a little X right here. All right, over here, what part and whole do we have? Well, we know the whole is the 24 hours. That's the whole amount of time he could have slept. And what did was the part that he slept? 18. All right, so right now, right off the bat, we have a proportion, and we know how to solve these. We're going to cross multiply. I love multiplying by 100. It's so easy because I just add two zeros to the end. So this is going to be 18 times 100, or 1,800, equals 24x. All right, now we have to divide both sides by 24. And we find that when we do that, he slept for 75% of his day. Again, it's always important if you have a word problem to put it in a label in there. If you just had 75, we may not know what that meant, right? All right, let's take a look at another one. All right, so again, I'm going to use percent on this part. And over here, there's no real labels, right? So I'm just going to say um, numbers. Okay, so let's set it up. Easiest thing to do always is the percents because... I know the whole percent every time is 100. That's never going to change. <clears throat> if you have 100% of something, that is the entire amount you'll ever have. So, let's think here. Do we know what part of that 100 we have? Yes. We know that we have 12%. So that's going to go with the percent side. Okay, That's the part of the whole. Let's go over here. Of 54 is the only other thing I know. So I need part and whole. Of, is that a whole thing or is that a part of something else? Ah, part of something else. That makes me to believe that this is the whole thing of 54. All right, and that means I don't know what part I'm looking for. So again, I'm going to cross multiply. So here I have 100n equals 12 times 54, which is 648. All right, then I'm gonna divide by 100. And we find that N is 6.48. Now, one of the things I wanna tell you is, before we get too far into this is, as a general rule for this section and probably this unit, Let's do um, two decimals. Let's round to the hundredths, okay? Let's round to the hundredths. All right. Now, perhaps a different look at this. So let's take a different look at uh, the same thing, all right? Now, that may seem weird. All right, here we go. So we had part over 100, but... There are a few things that were happening every time. Every time we had our percent over 100 for part and whole, right? And what's going on over here is on top, that means the part of the other part is the is part, and the whole was the of. So we can use this proportion every single time to solve these. So let's go ahead. What percent? I don't know that percent of 36 is 52. 
So I don't know the percent, that means it's a variable, all right? What percent over 100 equals is 52 of 36? Now this is weird. The whole is smaller than the part. Is that possible? Well, there are some times that things go over the whole, right? So maybe I wanted to save a whole $2 this weekend and I end up saving $2.50. So I had extra, I had above and beyond. So we should know right now that our answer is going to be above 100%. All right, let's multiply it out. We're going to cross multiply. Here we go. I love multiplying by 100. Add to 100 times 52, uh, 5,200, yep, <laughs> equals 36P. Now this one, this dividing by 36 here, that's going to be a little bit harder. Probably calculator time. What I find now in my calculator is it is 144, and that 4 repeats, but I want two decimals, so it's 144. Now is this a percent? No, Mr. Sullivan. That is not a percent, so we're not going to have the percent. Is there a label we should use? No, no real labels on this one. We'll get to some labels in a second, though. No real labels on that one. All right, let's try another one. So the first thing I want to do on this problem, I'm going to write down my percent, my part, over my whole percent, which is 100. And then is is my part, and of is my whole. Here we go. So 78 is 45% of what? I don't know of. So first thing I'm going to go down here and of, I don't know. All right. 78 is, that goes on top. 78 is, I always know I have 100%. And I'm using this time 45% is the part of the 100. So we're going to cross multiply. 100 times 78. Oh, that's really tricky. 7,800, 45n, opposite of multiplying by 45 is dividing by 45. So when we get that, we should get 173.33, because remember, we're rounding to two decimal places, we're rounding to the hundredths, this unit. All right, so what I want you to do, and now it's time to make con and go solo. Try this one on your own, all right? Just do your best. Don't worry so much if you get it right or wrong. All I want you to do is try, all right? So pause the video and try this one on your own. I said pause the video and try this one on your own. Come on, you gotta do some on your own. Awesome, so what percent, that's my variable, I don't know what percent, is 12 of 40. So my percent is a variable, I always know 100 stays the same. Is is 12, of is 40. We cross multiplied, we divided by 40, and we got 30%. Now we needed that percent there, so we know that it was a percent. That's what we were finding in this situation. All right, let's 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 use this now. Let's, let's have some fun. So before I even do anything here, I know I have a percent. All right, so I'm, I'm going to just kind of put this here. Percent over 100 is over of. All right, let's take a look. Siganello won 10 different European championships last year, which was 62.5% of all possible titles. How many titles were given? I don't know how many titles were given, but that is going to be my unknown. Let's set up everything we know. I know the percent. That is the easiest thing to label because it'll specifically ask for a percent, or you'll see the percent sign next to the number. So now the hardest thing is to determine, is this an is or is it an of? Is it a part? Is it a part or is it a whole? Let's think. They won 10 of a possible number of po titles. That 10 is part of all of them, so 10 is a part, so it goes with the is. And I don't know how many uh, um, there were, so that's my whole number. We're going to cross multiply. So we have 1,000 equals 62.5x. I'm going to divide both sides by 
And what we find out was that there were 16 titles won. So that was the whole number of possible titles that were won that year. Siganella won 10 of them, which were 62.5%. Okay? So pause the video again. Try this. Uh, do as much as you can. Set up the, the at least we should see an is over of, a percent over 100. Do as much of it as you can, and then we'll, we'll talk about it in just a second. All right, so Mr. Sullivan makes $24,000 a year working at the school. Some believe he's overpaid. Mr. Bruss probably is one of them. He pays $7,700 in taxes. What percent of his income, the $24,000, does he pay in taxes? So I set up my percent over 100. It was pretty easy this time to know that what I was looking for is the percent. So that's where I put my variable. And then I just had to figure out which was the is and which was the of. I think of part and whole when I do word problems. So the whole amount that I made was 24000 That goes on the bottom. And the is part, the part we weren't sure of, the uh, excuse me, the part of the 24000 goes on top, 7700 All right. I cross multiplied, I divided, and I found out that 32.08% of my money was being paid in taxes. That's a lot of money, but it does a lot of good things for a lot of good people, and I don't mind doing it, all right? So that is percents, proportions. Um, hopefully you are getting better at these along the way, and I can't wait till next time. Until then, make sure you learn as much as you can and uh, make the world a better place. Juice.